Hi there, uh, Gerald M. Kilby here, and what an amazing couple of weeks it has been for space nerds everywhere. And as a science fiction writer, you can imagine that um, I'm really excited by what's happening in space exploration. And I mean, right across the globe, it seems to be a massive international effort that's going on at the moment. But the big one for me has to be the uh, SpaceX SM8 test flight from Boca Chica in Texas. Now I don't mean to lessen the astounding achievements of many of the space agencies that are working away for the last few years, but the SNA test flight is a big deal. For me, I think it heralds a whole new era in space flight with the potential for colonizing Mars. So you can see why I, as a science fiction author with a a series based on the colonization of Mars, why I'd be so excited by this. Um, but it is a truly significant moment in space exploration history. Uh, I mean, SpaceX has some very radical ideas um, for their new spaceship and, and this new type of spaceship, you know, how it would re-enter the atmosphere and how it would land. It does this kind of flip to land. Uh, and all those elements worked out really beautifully for the test. Here you see the entry or the re-entry maneuver, uh, the ship uh, flips over onto its belly and it presents maximum um, surface area to the atmosphere. So it's using the friction of the air to slow itself down and it's keeping itself stable by using the four fins on the sides uh, of the ship. Um, and then as it powers on its engines, just coming into land, uh, it flips up right, right again. Uh, and in this case, yeah, obviously it ended up with a giant fireball. But don't let that uh, don't let that distract you from the the significance of of this test. Um, I mean, the ship orientated itself perfectly; it was right on target. Uh, it just apparently, according to Elon Elon's tweet, it just didn't have enough pressure in the header tank to provide the fuel for the engine. So really, it it just didn't have enough thrust to slow itself down. But you know, in, in all our respects, this is the least important part of that test. Uh, I mean, let's face it, SpaceX knows how to land rockets. You, you know, they've, they've landed something like 68 boosters out of 78 attempts, and each time they do it, it just gets better and better, and now it's effectively becoming routine. So I wouldn't worry too much about the landing. Um, the rest of the test was really what mattered, and that worked out amazingly well. So let's try and dig into this a bit more. So there's a lot, of, as I said, there's a lot of new elements to this ship. Uh, firstly, we have the Raptor engines. These uh, are new engines, new type of engines really that run on methane, different type of rocket fuel. Um, I think there have been engines before in the past that ran on methane, but really not at the level that SpaceX are, are, are using them. And the reason why is because methane is a, is a, a, a rocket fuel that uh, can be produced in situ on Mars. Second element of the ship really is this whole belly flop and flip to land, this strange um, maneuver that it, it does, which you don't see with any other rockets. Um, and you know, this is kind of the first time that a uh, spaceship has ever attempted this type of maneuver. And really it couldn't have gone better, it was, it was perfect. And as you can see with this, with this test, you know, SpaceX has, has has effectively gone a, a long way to prove the viability of the Starship concept. I mean, many people have kind of said, ah, you know, it looks like a tin can and, you know, it's not going to work and, you know, it's too crazy and, and whatever. But um, all that's been dispelled now. I mean, truly, this is a historic moment in, in space flight. So, I mean, you know, what does all this mean, ultimately? Uh, and why is it so significant? Well, it opens the Starship uh, as a as a form of space travel. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities. I mean, it's a low cost, fully reusable, heavy lift spaceship, uh, which we just don't have, um, and we do now with with, with, with Starship. So, you know, to put this in perspective, if you take say the cost of um, the launch, say of a Falcon Nine, that's about sixty million dollars. Now, that's you know, roughly, depending on who you ask and, and who's doing the buying and so on. Um, if you take a Falcon Heavy, that's around 90 million for a launch. Uh, and if you look at the new NASA 
Space, space Launch System, SLS, um, which they're hoping to use for lunar and Mars missions. Um, I mean, it's very hard to put a figure on the cost of launch on this, but it's, it's, we're talking billions. Easy. <laughs> for a single launch, because none of it's reusable. It's, it's all used up in, in, in the launch, and that's it. Then you want another launch, you need to build another one. Um, but the cost of the Starship launch really is only just the cost of fuel. Uh, which SpaceX estimates to be around about 2 million a pop um, and that's I think after they get fully up to speed the production uh, which is you know a pittance by comparison I mean it's an extraordinary figure uh, even if it's 10 times that uh, it's still nothing short of revolutionary in terms of cost saving um, and ultimately this sort of reusability and low cost uh, means that a Mars mission is now really more of a reality than it has any time been in the future. I mean, I've, I've listened to various pundits talking about Mars missions and it's, you know, 10 years, 20 years, so and so, so forth. Now they're all talking at least five years. So, I mean, it's a, it's a reality and it's a reality because of Starship. When I wrote the first book in my Colony Mars series, which is a six book series. So the first book was, oh, it was only a couple of years ago. Uh, I was basing the, um, the mission, you know, at the start of the book, there's a mission that lands down on Mars from the ISA, the International Space Agency as such. Uh, and I was basing all that on the uh, Mars Direct and Mars Semi-Direct proposal from uh, uh, Robert Zubrin, which in, originally envisaged using NASA's Ares rockets, uh, which I think was in development or, or it was a concept. Um, and later they, they Zubrin sort of re-engineered re the proposal based on the cost of the Falcon Heavy. But the price roughly of all of that, um, now this remember was the most cost effective mission plan at the time. And it came in somewhere between 5 billion and 55 billion, depending on who was doing it, whether it was a NASA or whether it was a private agency or what rocket was proposed. And, to some extent who you ask as to what the price of it is but suffice to say that's a lot of money now if you compare that to SpaceX uh, which in 2012 I think Elon Musk mentioned that uh, it might be a trip to Mars might be as low as 200 grand US dollars per person now obviously there's some caveats here we're not taking into consideration the cost of building the ships and obviously there'd be several needed for big supplies and people and then we'd be talking about the cost of infrastructure you know the hab the fuel processing the power generation although they probably could use the spaceship as the hab because it's big enough uh, but still overall you can see that starship it's not just cheaper it's orders of magnitude cheaper so, you know, by the time I got to writing the third book in the Colony Mars series, I'd moved on to starships. Um, in fact, there's a scene where our hero, Jan Malbec, is, is looking out across Jezero City at a tall, gleaming starship, <laughs> ready and waiting on the pad <laughs> in Jezero Crater. And really, I do think that the first human flight to Mars uh, and the first boots on the ground there will be via a SpaceX Starship, I really don't think um, economically there's any other option. Um, but we'll see. We'll wait and see. So my my feeling is that when that when SN8 landed back down on the pad, even if it was in a fireball um, in Boca Chica, you know, it, it's, it, it has heralded a whole new age of space travel. I, I think it, 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 it will go down as the moment uh, when the solar system just got a whole lot smaller. Anyway, that's all from me. Um, I'll leave some links in the description about um, Mars Direct and, and other things you might find interesting. Uh, and, and if you want me to do something on um, you know, how a Mars mission might pan out or even how um, the colonization of Mars might might work or might you know practically speaking uh, just leave me a comment um, in the comment section below and uh, I'll see what I can do I'll, I'll certainly do something if there's enough interest in it anyway look that's all for me and I shall see you next time take care